Professional wrestling is a very tough and grueling sport. You spend nearly 300 plus days on the road, getting beat up, slammed on the ground, and traveling, suffering with nagging injuries. So naturally, it isn't for the faint of heart, and that is something that the coaches try to teach in wrestling as they are trying to teach it. However, there have been multiple cases of coaches who sometimes have taken things a bit too far, like with Bill DeMott who would constantly harm NXT trainees to Kenta himself being accused of being a bad trainer whilst in pro wrestling Noah. But today, I want to talk about one incident that isn't really all that well known, and that is the incident where Kensuke Sasaki killed a New Japan trainee. Now, if you don't know who Kensuke Sasaki is, he is a very well established name, not only working all over Japan, but he even wrestled in WCW, and at one point he was even a former WCW United States Champion. He had even dabbled in the world of mixed martial arts, winning his only two fights via submission. So Sasaki was no stranger to success, and he would try and parlay his success by helping the young lions in New Japan Pro Wrestling train to wrestle in that authentic New Japan Strong style. Enter Hiromitsu Gompei, who was a 22 year old kid and an amateur wrestler who was said to have been really good. And it's hard to write about him and talk about him because there isn't a lot of information on him that is known other than the fact that he was an amateur wrestler who was thinking about making the transition to becoming a pro wrestler. Which in and of itself is not a far-fetched idea as many amateur wrestlers have made the jump to have success like Chad Gable, Kurt Angle, and Hiroshi Hase who had some connection to Gompei as he had promised the family of Gompei that he would take care of him and that nothing bad would happen to him whilst training in the New Japan Dojo as they were really apprehensive about him joining. Eventually, Gompei would decide to join the New Japan Pro Wrestling Dojo and he would find out that pro wrestling was nothing like amateur wrestling at all. Now, it's no secret that pro wrestling has its stories of hazing and abusive behind the scenes behavior. But from what I've read, back in the day, the abuse that the New Japan trainees would go through was just absolutely harsh. According to Matthew Randazzo's book, Ring of Hell, he talks about stories such as how one trainee was sodomized with a banana because he was a picky eater. Also in the book, it talks about Chris Benoit's time training in the company at the same time, and how at one point in the dojo, he was ordered to stand still while the Japanese wrestlers took turns punching him in the ears until they were bruised and bloodied, and they would perform tight headlocks so that they could essentially break the cartilage in Benoit's ears so that they could have cauliflower ears, which is a deformity of the ear which results in a bumpy or lumpy appearance on part of the ear, which is common in some wrestlers like Hiroshi Tanahashi. It was also said in the book that apparently there was a lot of emotional abuse, extreme punishment for making mistakes, sexual humiliation at the dojo, and it was sort of like a cult that you were being inducted to, not only just to Benoit, but to a lot of the people who were just trying to train to become pro wrestlers. However, there is a reason behind the constant hazing and bullying of the young lions. They want to make sure that the weak is separated from the strong and they want to get rid of those that potentially are wasting their own time. But they also interviewed a Japanese wrestler in the book Ring of Hell that said, A wrestler who is pushed to his breaking point is a wrestler who looks like he is really fighting for his life in the ring. It was also stated that if the trainers saw the trainees in pain, they were allowed to punch, slap, or even kick them without any sort of repercussion 
and that was the world that Hiromitsu Kompe had entered. Kompe started off with the company and doing their grueling four-hour workouts and some of the workouts included doing 1,000 squats and 500 push-ups just to warm up. And if you messed up or you showed any sort of pain, they made you do an additional 100 or so or however many they felt like you should do for punishment. It was not for the faint of heart and Gompe would find out just how brutal the sport of professional wrestling can be. So. According to Ring of Hell, this is how the particular event happened. Gompe had done his usual four-hour workout and was done for the day. When Ricky Choshu, who was the head booker for New Japan Pro Wrestling at the time, showed up to the dojo. And the trainers wanted to show Choshu what they were working with exactly. And so they made Gompe start his four-hour workout from the beginning all over again. Gompe, who was understandably drained from already working out four hours, could not keep up. And not to mention that in his first workout, he had taken several hard shots to the head by taking some bad bumps. Gompe, not being able to keep up, embarrassed the trainers that day, which made Sasaki, who was training, very angry as he felt as though Gompe was not giving it his all. Sasaki then proceeded to give a very tired and worn Gompe several very hard and violent suplexes and would beat the piss out of Gompe. Now as we've established this isn't anything new in the world of professional wrestling as it's been done before like we saw when Hardcore Holly beat the shit out of Matt Capitelli on Tough Enough. But what would happen next was unlike the prior incident. Unfortunately, Gompe would not be able to recover from his wounds and would ultimately end up dying from severe head trauma that he had sustained from that day. Hiroshi Hase, who had promised Gompe's parents that he would look after him and that nothing bad would happen to Gompe, was so infuriated with what happened that he ended up leaving New Japan Pro Wrestling after this incident. And unfortunately, Hase was the one to have told Gompei's parents what had happened. Kensuke Sasaki, however, was never fully charged for the crime. And according to Ring of Hell, New Japan was worried that this was going to become a big story that they could face potential backlash for. But for some reason or another, it was never well publicized at all. And some say that the Yakuza had something to do with covering it up, but if you ask me, it all seems just a little bit far-fetched. And this ultimately would not have that much of a negative impact on Sasaki's career as he would continue to wrestle. Now, looking back on this and doing the research for this video, I'm pretty sure that Sasaki never meant to kill Gompe. He only wanted him to learn a lesson, and it was obviously a case of Sasaki taking it way too far. However, the punishment that these trainees had to endure was something that no one should have to go through. And I know that you have to try and separate the weak from the strong by testing their limits, but there are better ways to do that that don't involve a wrestler dying. And thankfully, we have evolved in a way that we treat head trauma and how wrestlers take care of each other very seriously and we try to get rid of the trainers who are abusive like Bill DeMott and Kensuke Sasaki. And one of the reasons why Kensuke Sasaki was never really formally charged was because of the fact that they treated this as an accident that happened in the ring and nothing more as this was just wrestling training going a bit too far when in reality it was bullying because that's what it really was there's a difference between motivation and bullying one pushes you to be the best that you can ultimately be and the other insults you degrades you and sometimes costs you your life 